Well, this Helldivers 2 saga just is getting wilder and wilder. This is going to, I think, by the end of the year... For a game that going into 2024 didn't have a ton of buzz, didn't have a ton of hype surrounding it, man, what a roller coaster we have been taken on when it comes to the release. And now, I don't want to say the collapse of Helldivers 2, but certainly there is some work that needs to be done. There is some reevaluation that needs to be done as far as Helldivers 2 is concerned. And now, the biggest news that is circulating is the fact that Steam is offering refunds for Helldivers 2 or issuing refunds. I'm sure, you know, it's a case-by-case -case basis and you have to send them a well-thought-out message because chances are most of you have broken the threshold that Steam generally offers refunds in. If you guys, for some reason, don't know, um, and you'd be surprised at how many people don't know that Steam refunds are a thing. This is going back to 2022, not that long ago, but a buddy of mine who regularly plays video games bought Elden Ring based on the fact that a bunch of my other friends were talking about it and he bought it played it for 90 minutes didn't really like it and he was just like man I just uh, wasted $60 on that game and then I told him bro steam refunds are a thing like come on now uh and then he was like shocked that that was a thing and was blown away but nevertheless one of the great features on steam but there is a threshold that generally you have to fit in unless there is extenuating circumstances that threshold by the way is two weeks from the purchase of the game and less than two hours uh, of playtime. It cannot be broken in either of those elements. It can't be over two weeks. You can't have more than two hours. It's a case-by-case -case basis where, again, if there are extenuating circumstances, they might honor a refund. And in the case, it looks like Steam is honoring refunds for Helldivers 2. Somebody... Uh, this screenshot is circulating, but somebody has over 225 hours into the game. Subtotal of their initial purchase was $39.99, and they've been refunded the entire amount. I imagine based on the fact of the PSN implementation when it comes to Helldivers 2. Now... For anybody to think that, you know, all of a sudden millions of people are going to refund the game, I don't think that's going to be the case. And ultimately, I don't foresee this being an instance where even if there's a significant amount of people that end up wanting refunds out of the game, I feel like at some point you got to be like, all right, no, bro, like we can't refund like a million people that bought the game. I don't know how these things work, but generally speaking, I just don't think uh, that'll be something that does happen. Um... Now, right now, Steam does have a concurrent player count of over 100,000 players, so that's a healthy number, but obviously the PSN element hasn't been implemented, and whatever, the player count is going to be the player count. You don't want this kind of reception attached to the game. You don't want a game that was in such good graces with the entire gaming community. People are were talking, people were saying such statements like this is bringing my love back of gaming i haven't played video games in a long time and i jump back into hell divers 2 it is such a great co-op experience it's bringing my joy back for gaming people thought that highly of the game this revitalized the enjoyment of video games for some people that is not hyperbole that is at one point the reception, the rhetoric attach, uh, attached to Helldivers 2. Think about that and think about now going to where we are, where the recent reviews, a little bit of an update as of recording this video, 148,000 reviews, 26% of those reviews are positive. By the way, before it was sitting at 85% uh, positive reviews before this hoopla. So legitimately, that many negative reviews have come in to weigh down that average by 60%. Think about that for a second. And the, the overall reviews have dropped to 60% positive across 425,000 reviews. But it's just falling and falling and falling. And certainly, there is a level of course correction that needs to be done. Whether, it, I mean, it's not really from Arrowhead. As it's been outlined to us, this is a PlayStation decision. And PlayStation isn't going to be like Arrowhead. Arrowhead is this game studio that out of their own volition, they have decided to have that level of transparency to the consumer. PlayStation is not like that, you guys. Arrowhead and PlayStation, they are not one unified front. If somebody pushes back on PlayStation, you know, there might be times where they need to be transparent because I don't know, oh, the PlayStation network gets hacked and it gets shut down for a month. I bring that up because one of the things that Arrowhead said, the reasoning for the PSN implementation is for security reasons. And yes, 
When some when a hack happens, PlayStation has to be transparent as far as that and what's going on. As far as, you know, immense amount of backlash, yeah, there are times that PlayStation is going to be transparent, but that is few and far between, you guys. What you have seen out of Arrowhead for the last three months, the level of dialogue that they have had towards the consumer, the goodwill that they have built up, that is Arrowhead doing that. PlayStation, I love PlayStation. I love PlayStation consoles. I love their games, but they are a company at the end of the day, and these billion-dollar companies are however much money Sony and PlayStation is worth. They're not going to have that level of transparent, direct-to-consumer dialogue. That's just very... That's very atypical in the gaming world. And PlayStation and these big companies, they are more of the mindset. If they do something to piss you off, oh, we'll just ride out the wave and hopefully uh, you guys will forget about it and move on to the next thing. And you know what? A lot of the times that works. There are cases where, you know, the vitriol attached to, for example... Xbox deciding that the Xbox One was going to be online only. Yeah, that bites you in the ass. But the thing about PlayStation is they are so far ahead right now in the gaming market that I don't know how much care in the world that they have for things like this. I know that they want to pop off with live service games and why undermine your most successful live service game thus far. It is not even close as far as the success levels of their live service games. Helldivers 2 has been a home run for Sony. Why jeopardize that? All for account linking with PSN? If you could be transparent into how this is going to benefit the consumer and how this is necessary for Helldivers 2, uh, I would like to know but they've said that this isn't an Arrowhead decision. It's a PlayStation decision. And, um, you know, if you want to do optional account linking, totally fine. Totally cool. Optional account linking with incentives like, oh, you'll get a cool PlayStation skin. Oh, trophy support on your PlayStation Network account. Great. That's awesome. Optional incentives to link accounts. Great. Do that. Do not make it mandatory. We've been playing this game for three months. Why is this mandatory? I don't care if the terms of service said currently. Guess what? The game has been working for three months. It hasn't been a promoted element in Arrowhead for a studio to be so transparent and then hit you with this. Uh, that is definitely a little bit of a sidestep from what we've known out of Helldivers 2. Helldivers 2 has done a tremendous job of building the consumer's goodwill. I'm going to say this over and over again because right now in gaming, it is so easy to take goodwill from consumer and burn it. And it is so hard to rebuild that. Look at Ubisoft. Ubisoft has zero goodwill, and that is why people push back on Star Wars Outlaws and all of the nonsense they're doing with that game. If another publisher did that, that had a lot of goodwill, yes, you would destroy some of that goodwill, but people might be a little bit more accepting. And now for Ubisoft, it is so difficult. It will be damn near impossible for them to rebuild that goodwill because they're not going to go back on this. They're not going to suddenly stop doing, uh, you know, know all the greed tactics that they do and they probably have already thrown in the towel on ever rebuilding that goodwill so why not fleece the people that are going to continue buying the game why not sell them these microtransactions it works all day for ubisoft so you know maybe sony is of the mindset that hey it's a bunch of vocal minority crowd uh you know yelling and raging online and sometimes that is true and sometimes it's just not i've always talked about Social media metrics, it's important to analyze. Just like with any other data, it's important to analyze that data. What does that data mean? What does these statements mean? What does all of this mean? Sometimes it means a lot. Sometimes it means nothing. In the case of Helldivers 2, I do think it means a lot just for the sheer scale of negativity that's surrounding it. And when it's this much, you're just destroying. You're blowing up goodwill. And even if it's not an Arrowhead decision, most of the consumers aren't going to think about that. They're thinking about it from the standpoint of Helldivers 2 in totality. Whether it's Arrowhead, whether it's PlayStation, that's irrelevant to the consumer. Helldivers 2, as a game, built a lot of goodwill. Now you're destroying that goodwill. And once you destroy all the goodwill it's so hard to rebuild it but that'll do it for me let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section down below interested to hear from you guys this saga has been wild to cover thus far but again that'll do it for me your thoughts down below thanks for watching and i will catch you guys in the next one peace out Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the 
the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.